going great. You know, we're, we're having a lot of fun with the smaller venues. Um, it's, uh, you know, playing big venues sometimes can be impersonal. So anytime you can get into a small club or uh, a smaller arena or something, it's, it's nice. It's, it's cool having that uh, intimacy with the crowd. I love campuses and college. It brings back memories. And, you know, I just, uh, we, we love playing smaller venues. It's more intimate. She grew up watching hockey with her daddy on Saturday night. I don't know. I don't know that it was that. Uh, it definitely, I didn't want to do that the rest of my life. It was a great job and I worked with some great guys, but um, there was a lot of automation happening. I knew I had to find a different job and I had a dream of doing music. She can wear high heels or flannel. She can look sexy in a toque. Uh, it was really kind of weird. I mean, that night we were in Brick, New Jersey and the band that was opening for us was the U.S. Army Band. So these are people in the, in the U.S. Army who are very talented musicians also. And, uh, and yeah, a couple uh, majors came up and said, you know, when I went to leave the stage, they came up and said, no, I want you to stay here. And then they presented me with this, uh, this certificate of appreciation for uh, uh, helping the morale of the, the U.S. Armed Forces and their families. And so it meant, it meant a lot, you know, it, it really did. And especially because I wasn't, I'm not, part of their country, right? And so that was, it was a real honor. She likes snowstorms and Gordon Lightfoot And if you're lucky, she'll love you One song of the year for Brothers a couple years ago, that was definitely a moment. Mm -hmm. um, Grand Old Opry, my first time on the, the Opry stage. And just, just now, like with my, with my guys and got a great group of guys for a band and traveling with them, it's a, it's a great job now. You know, there were times before where it was like, man, this, is it really worth it? But, but it, it definitely is now. But yeah, you just you get in so deep that you just have to keep keep going. It's kind of like poker. You, you, you're in so deep, you might as well play it out and see how it's going to work out. But it, it did. There were a couple times thought it was going to be over. Canadian girls, Canadian girls. Um, there's a couple. Uh, I've gone a little bit more out on the edge than I did on the last record. We've got one song that's kind of almost Chris Isaac, some of the darker Dwight Yoakam style kind of songs, and it's called Nowhere USA. And so it's, it's, it's got this really cool vibe. It's definitely different. And then I've also got an East Coast kind of song that we did with uh, Great Big C. I didn't think about it till now, I guess. But you know, I lived in the U.S. for six years, and and uh, they're really patriotic, really patriotic uh, nation. And and then even living in Canada, I've heard a lot of you know American girl songs, you know. And I was thinking, man, it'd be cool if we had one about our girls. And and so it was actually kind of easy to write once I decided to to try that. Ideal Canadian girl. Uh, she's got to be funny, right? And she's got to love Canada. She's got to love snow and cabins and the outdoors. And well, I mean, you know, my wife is the ideal Canadian girl to me. And I think she embodies a lot of that. I mean, she loves Gordon Lightfoot, but she loves modern stuff too. Hey everybody, I'm Dean Brody, and you're listening to riotradio.ca. Fade out, right? Yeah. Fade, yeah. fade to black, dissolve too. <laughs>